Coach, what can you say about the resiliency of a team going on the road, opening up in the Big Ten, being down, it looked like it was going in a different direction, but the guys fought back. What can you say about that? Um, it was great to see. You know, we've been one of the things we've been talking about as coaches is <clears throat> we want to see how our guys will respond when we face some adversity. Um, and obviously, we face some adversity in week one, but you know, being down on the road is it's a different deal. And um, super excited about how they responded, man. Um, we just stayed stuck together on the sideline. There was a belief on the sideline that we would win the game, um, and we fought. And we fought to the last what four seconds, and uh, got it done. So uh, I think it says a lot about. You know, the culture of the building, culture of our team, and the direction that this uh, program is headed. Or you had a big sophomore year yourself. Can you imagine at age 17 <laughs> in that environment doing what Nick did? Uh, Nick being Nick, me recruiting, not, I, I expect it. You know, I, I don't, maybe not the numbers that, that he put up, but he's a, a talented kid, man. And um, that won't be just a flash in the, in the bucket type of deal. Talent aside, emotionally, psychologically, what allowed him to do that? I think his preparation, um, his overall approach to the game, I mean, his overall approach to life, he, he's a, he's a well-centered kid, well-grounded, uh, studies, you know, knows multiple positions on our team, um, you know, got some leadership qualities about him. You know, he, he, he is just, you know, he's that kind of kid you want in your room. You know, he, he's, a, he's like a program changer. You know, type of athlete and um, very humble. You know, you never know that he, you know he had 194 yards. You know, he's out there practicing his tail off. You know, right now, like you know, the next play, the, the next play is the most important play. So, you know, great kid to have on the on your team. Wondering about not just his route running on, on, on the long pass, but also what you saw from your guys in the two minute drills at the end of the, the two halves and what they did on some of those routes and what. Um, I'll tell you what, that's just, you know, they brought the practice field to the game field. You know, we go two minutes a couple of times a week. Um, we stress the importance of it, the details of it. The details of route running is, is something that, you know, I'm big on. And uh, they stuck to the plan. And uh, it was great to see them, you know, under pressure, not fold, you know, not try something new because it's, you know, only one minute left in the game. I'm, I'm going to try to make the play. They stuck to the plan, and it was great to see. Week one, nobody had even 30 yards receiving. And you coming off that game, what, you know, I, what, what, is your, what are your thoughts knowing what you, you've seen from those guys in practice? Well, I felt like game one, you know, the lights were on. Um, there, there, were some, there were some big time errors in game one. Uh, we had great improvement from game one to game two. It's something that you want to see as a coach. And now we want to see improvement from game two to game three. Uh, but what happened, you know, last week is that's 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 the standard that's the expectation here at michigan state of receivers to go out and make plays and uh, i won't give any opportunity and then we had some opportunities to capitalize you know it's great for the room you know you got three guys that's got in the paint i mean there's a bunch of smiling going on in there so guys are working their tail off and did you get this on tory in particular he did not have a great opener and you know he had the, yeah. the bottle on the first play and the fumble you know from a veteran guy who you know what was the kind of the message to him and what you saw in the response? Really, the message was was just, you know, be yourself. You know, don't worry about, you know, it's water under the bridge. It's over with. I know what kind of player you are. You know what kind of player you are. Your teammates know what kind of player you are. All right, now let's go out and do it. And he had a great week of work and, uh, you know, showed on the field on, uh, on Saturday. How much was Andrew's play calling was meant not just to get Aiden in a rhythm, but get Montori and Jerron kind of thinking ahead rather than thinking back? Um, I think it's always important to get the wide outs involved early. Uh, it wasn't so much that that coach had a plan to, you know, get them the ball earlier. It was just kind of the play calling. But the earlier we get touches, you know, the more engaged uh, wide outs seem to become. You know, the longer it takes, and you know, the position has a little bit of selfishness to it. You know, that's just what it is. You know, so when you give a guy a ball or two, then you know, he's like, okay, now let me. I'm gonna go out here and block a little harder. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run a little faster on this post that's clearing out for the dig. So you know, it, it all works together. Is there anything that Nick did that you noticed that maybe just the average observer might not have noticed, like a, some below the surface level that yeah. you liked about what he was doing out there? Uh, I mean, the one thing is that he played fast on every route, and then also, you know, we talk, you get into talking about stems on routes, 
and he was just, I mean, he was so precise on a couple of the long balls, the stems that he ran and resetting guys at the top, you know, some things that veteran guys would do, guys that are in their, you know, second, third year in college. Uh, it was great to see him just, I mean, he put on a couple, a couple of them will be training, they'll be on my training reel, like, you know, this is, this is how we run this particular route, you know, so just to see the route discipline from him in week two, as we said already from a 17 year old young man, you know, was, was, was great to see. Did you see let him know that you still had a couple more yards than him? <laughs> no, we, we haven't had that discussion, but like I said before, I'm recruiting guys to knock me out of the top 10. There's no way after 30 years or however many years it's been that I should be in the top 10, especially in the kind of offenses that, that are of today's offense versus the offenses then. So everybody I'm trying to get here at Michigan State should be able to knock me out, hopefully. How much do you think the culture of accountability has kind of been restored here? I mean, you have the coaching staff, uh, particularly after the first game, Jonathan, many maybe you should have you know, kicked a field goal you know, instead of going for it on that fourth down. You also have you know, Brian saying that you know, maybe you should have gotten made in a rhythm. I mean, when, when the players hear that the coaches are you know, admitting some mistakes and you know, wanting to do that, how much does that make them want to take ownership of their, their own error? On the, on the field. Um, I mean, I think the statements you made, you know, we just let our guys know we're all in this together and, and nobody's perfect. You know, they're going to make errors. We're going to coach them up. We're going to make errors. We'll coach ourselves up, coach each other up. And uh, they know that we got their back and, and we need them to have our back when, when we make a bad call or, or do something in hindsight to say, you know, I would have did it a different way. Um, you know, like I said, man, it's building. Like there's there's sunshine in the building. This is a great building to be in. You know, we went through a rough patch. Um, guys depend on each other, believe in each other, and, and plan hard for one another. Going going back to Nick, I mean, obviously in his recruitment, I mean, he had a lot of a lot of offers from elsewhere, particularly you know, Big Ten rival. Um, yeah, he stayed the course. I mean, how much did you get a sense of his character, and then the recruitment to kind of you know go through that rough patch uh, with you guys last year. Um, you know, we started recruiting Nick early, like, you know, ninth grade. Um, so I, I know him really well. I know his whole family. Um, you know, the, the way he handled things, he handled it professionally. Um, he called me, let me know. Um, and, and, you know, his reasoning was, was that, you know, he wanted to be honest. He didn't want me to hear something through the media. Um, so um, it, it, the way it was handled is, is Nick Marsh. You know, and, you know, there was no panic here by me. You know, I knew where I stood at. You know, they wanted to see some other stuff. I wasn't really tripping. I just kept, you know, just quiet. We were on the phone, you know, making sure, you know, you ain't going too far. You go, go ahead and go take a look. But you, you, you know where, you know where home is. So um, just kept the fight, man. And that, you know, that's recruiting these days. And, um, you know, when, when he was ready, you know, he recommitted. But I honestly felt like, I honestly felt like that I was going to get him back. With, with all the success that Nick had as a ninth grader and all the attention he got, media and everything, are, are you impressed that he stayed, it's a, he stayed focused and stayed humble, kind of? And, and did you let, uh, is that, how difficult is that for a young athlete to have that much attention and success in ninth grade and come out the way he is right now as a college freshman? Um, is, that, is that a challenge when you're. When you're it, it's a challenge. That early? It's a challenge because you, you get a bunch of attention. Uh, from you know all different areas, um, but like I said about him earlier, man, he he is one of the coolest, humble kids, hard workers that you'll meet. Like I said, I mean, he's coming off this huge game. You would think he only caught one pass. He still he's sitting in the front row. He's stayed after taking extra notes. Um, he's just being Nick Marsh. His mom did a tremendous job with him, making sure that you know. That he's just a great person. He's really good. Like I said before, he is great for Michigan State outside of football. He's a great kid to have on campus. How much does his personality and his personality blending and meshing help that connection and help the rest of the offense? Well, like I said, man, you know, receivers and QBs, you know, I mean, you you got a great relationship, man. It's it's something special about it. Um, those two dudes, you see them, you know, they eat together, they hang out together. Um, 
you know, having a great relationship, you know, off the field allows them to be able to, you know, speak to each other in maybe a little different language than, <laughs> than you talk to your typical friend. Um, but they, they just, they're, they're growing. They're both growing together, you know. There's been a little bit of this these first two games, but, you know, you know nobody's been too high with the highs, too low with the lows. They stay consistent, you know, work their tails off during practice and, um, you know, getting ready for Prairie View. What was the big Sunday or kind of proud father type of thing when you're watching Jaden and Jalen and Keon, these guys, you, you know, you help develop it in their yeah. yard? No, it's pretty, it's pretty cool, man, to watch those guys, man. It, um, you know, any, anybody that came through here um, that I've had an opportunity to work with, you know, whether they left and for whatever reason they went to some other college, and, and you know, I kind of track them all. I mean, I, I might not hit them up or anything, but I'll see how they did, um, you know, because part of this deal is about relationships, you know, so I want, I want everybody to flourish. I know that everybody that comes in here, you know, you ask them, they want to play on the next level, so, you know, you know, I, I'm super excited for them. You know, I've, I've been down that path, that journey, so I know how it is to play on Sunday and, um, you know, opening week and all the hoopla that goes on with that. And, and, and you know, so it's it's uh, it's always fun to watch them do it. Show you I did see it. He stabbed that boy. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was an impressive catch. Yeah, well, yeah. That was an impressive I'm catch. I'm wondering about Gates and Isaiah, too. I mean, the snaps they got after Jerron went out, like, how big is that as a building block for those guys when you, when you know, got a couple guys that either dinged up or out on the line? Yeah. Um, I think it's huge, you know, for the room, you know, first of all, and then, and then for them, you know, they they were thrust into action. Um, you know, the plan was to play them, you know, um, and they had the opportunity to play, and and went in and, you know, for the most part, got lined up, executed um, uh, the plays, and. Um, you know, like I said, that all helps the room. You know, everybody gets a chance to kind of, you know, get in there and go at it a little bit. Um, makes practice, practice is a little better, you know, because guys feel like, you know, I'm, I'll be playing this week. Um, so I'm really proud of those guys. Got in and, and, and uh, you know, helped us get the dub. Corp, one more thing about Nick. Uh, Mama said after the commit, decommit, recommit, all of that, there were schools, one in particular, that wouldn't quit. And the bag just kept getting bigger. Uh, well, what's it like for a coach in that situation? And then she says it's a four-year decision, not four years or four months. What does that mean? Well, for me, that means it's, it's about the relationship. It was about the relationship that, that I built with the Marsh family from the very beginning. Um, you know, it, it wasn't all about ball. You know, it's all, you know, part of this deal is, is, is you know, as we said, Nick's 17. You know, she, she knows that and I made her a promise that I'll help her young boy grow into a man when he leaves here, you know, and, and that's part of this process. And I think that that was bigger than any other influences that that were thrown this way, you know, and um, uh, our relationship is as strong as it's ever been, um, along with her and, and, and the girls, you know, so it's 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 uh, it's exactly what I thought it would be, man. And I think the best from him is really the best is yet to come. I mean, that was just, we'll be center here again, trust me. As an assistant, are you aware <laughs> when the numbers keep going up and up and up? Something like that? Um, you mean like from uh, yeah. catches and, and yards? No, no, I mean other schools. They keep um, you know, you, you always hear a bunch of rumors, yeah. you know, so you, you, you try not to get involved in that because at the end of the day, you find out, you know, some are true, some are not. Um, you know, you just try to be, for me, I just be authentic, I be myself. And, and you know, I let guys know, you know, this is the kind of training you're going to get. This is what we're going to get off the field. This is the program. Um, you know, I'm the dude that you're going to feel like you need to invite to your wedding because we got that kind of relationship. You know, that's what it's all about for me. You know. And, you mentioned that they, uh, Aiden and Nick have, are building something together. And um, Aiden and Nick have both talked about how they hold each other accountable. Stuff. Yeah. Do you think they have the potential to be like, you know, not this season necessarily, but down the line, you know, one of the better quarterback wide receiver duos in the country? Oh, no question. There's no question about that. Um, you know, they're both young. They're both just scratching the surface. You know, I mean, Aiden's 18. You know, I think people forget about that because he's starting here at Michigan State, but he's an 18-year-old young man. Um, and Nick's 17. You know, so, you know, who knows, two, three years from now, 
I mean, these dudes could be, you know, the number one quarterback in the country, the number one wideout in the country. And I, I you know, I really expect it to be that. You know, I, I think they are that talented to to be mentioned in those type of phrases in a couple of years, if not this year. You ran a couple two-minute drills at the end of each half. Did you notice, does the helmet peel make that any smoother or quicker, or is it just same old, same old? Uh, For the most part, when we get into our, our true two-minute mode, like we were, those were, were hand signals, most of them, because we're going so fast and, and then it's so loud, you know, Aiden can't communicate to everybody. So now our eyes are going to the sideline and, and we're kind of signaling things so in. Well, um, I mean, there may be some kind of, I'm pretty sure, you know, Lindgren is speaking to him um, on, you know, here's what the play call is going to be. Maybe, you know, giving him a couple of tidbits before that 15 second goes. But remember, we're just trying to snap that ball as fast as possible. So, you know, that just comes from, you know, practice. You know, practice. We did two minutes, um, you know, or two minutes today. It will be two minutes tomorrow. You know, we get it in. The last one you said about Aiden and Nick and Tampa Boy. I mean, you, you look at that through the prism of your NFL experience. I mean, knowing what, what a player at that level looks like. Yeah, I actually look at everything through those through that lens. You know, everything. Recruiting. Um, I can't help it. I mean. I think sometimes from as, as maybe as a fault, um, but knowing what I know and the, and the guys that I've been around and the rooms that I've been in over my nine year career of playing and, and being around some great quarterbacks, um, these two kids have the, they have the gifts and the talent to play at that level. You know, now it's just a matter of, of, of nurturing them, um, them growing as men and, and continuing to absorb this offense Take in the details, um, you know. Like I said, man, the sky's the limit. But they are, they are talented. <laughs> There's some talented young dudes. How valuable is it, you know, having that reference, knowing, knowing what it looks like at that level, to uh, having experienced it and seeing it up close? I mean, I, I think it's super valuable. You know, when, when, when I'm talking to my guys, you know, they know I'm talking from, you know, being on the field. Um, most of the time, we're making adjustments on the sideline. You know, it's like it's not new to me. You know, I've seen it before. They come to me talking on the sideline like, okay, it, this is what it should look like. This is what it is. Um, and, and I think they respect that because they like, you know, you know, I ain't talking out of no book. You know, I'm, it, it's, it's, it's actually the college game to me looks in slow motion, if you honestly want to know. Everything, everything looks like it's, it's just moving along slowly. Um, so it, it's easy to coach um, and the guys. The guys respect, you know, everything that I say to them. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, thanks for that. Thanks, Thank you. Yeah. Yep.